Welcome to John Gets Games. This is my Games Radar vlog for January 2020, and today I will be discussing 34 new games that I've learned about over the last six weeks or so. Now, I will be going through them in alphabetical order, and before we jump into that, I do want to mention that if you'd prefer to just listen to this vlog instead of watching it on YouTube, then you can do so by finding the John Gets Games podcast wherever you regularly listen to podcasts. Now, at this point, I do want to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool perks, like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now start talking about games, and since we are going in alphabetical order, we will begin with Alma Mater. Now, this is a 2020 release from Egertspiel, and the artist is Chris Williams, who also did Coimbra. Now, this is designed by four different Italian designers who have a hand in Coimbra, as well as Terramara, and Igizia and Lorenzo Il Magnifico, so quite a bit going on there. Now, this looks to be a Euro-style game set in the Renaissance. You have drafting, uh, hand management, and tile placement, and in fact, there is an overview video that I watched earlier, and it seems like this is a worker placement style game where you are doing a bunch of euro type stuff. In particular, this is the type of game where you place a worker down on a spot and somebody else can go there if they spend more workers than the previous placed person. And in addition to that, while you're playing through the game, you are going to be uh, essentially making books for your university. You're in charge of a university. And then it sounds like you actually sell those books to your opponents or they take them away from you. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but there is kind of a sliding market on your player board for the price of the books that I believe you make. So um, there's kind of an internal economy, I guess, of your books and your opponent's books as you're trying to get as many students as you can, and uh, I think also professors and whatnot. So uh, it obviously uh, looks a lot like Coimbra, and it's probably a similar weight overall. Um, board Game Geek says uh, 90 to 120 minutes, so maybe a little bit less weight than Coimbra since there was uh, that was certainly a longer game to play in my experience, but either way, this one looks fun, and I'm certainly interested in learning more about it and also trying it. Now, the next game is Amalfi, and this one is designed by Yamada Takayo. Now, I don't think they have any Board Game Geek uh, listings for previous designs, and this is another Renaissance game with drafting and worker placement. So it says you take on the role of merchants in an Italian port of Amalfi during the Renaissance period. The town was a dominant maritime power during the last century, uh, but the importance is diminishing, and you are trying to essentially recapture that previous success with your tiny little ships. You are going to be purchasing charts to investigate navigation. You're going to be building ships, collecting paints, doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, right now, the uh, Board Game Geek page does not have any photos of the board. It's got photos of little bits, little uh, uh, ships and whatnot, and they look interesting. Uh, so I am curious to learn more about this game. It says it's 120 minutes to 180 minutes. So that's not a short game overall for one to four players. And I would definitely like to learn more about what's going on here because there's not a lot of information on BGG. Next up, we have Aquatica, the Cold Waters expansion. Now, I loved Aquatica when I played it last year, and I'm hoping to get a copy of the game. I don't actually have it yet, uh, but I played it twice at BGGCon, and it's a really neat game that uses a hand-building mechanic, kind of like Concordia, with a bunch of combo -y stuff going on. And this expansion essentially has, thematically, the cold waters of the North Ocean rushing into the area of Aquatica, and it's causing a bunch of, I guess, volcanoes to erupt, and the city collapses, and uh, mechanically, this just adds in new modules, uh, new cards, new locations, um, and uh, new goals that you can work towards in the game. And I think um, Aquatico is great, but I also think having some extra stuff to shuffle in, and in particular some new goals to hunt for, is probably going to be a good thing. So I'm hoping to own a copy of Aquatica someday, and when I do, I will certainly be interested in also having this Cold Waters expansion. I'm not sure when exactly it's set to come out, but probably at some time in 2020. All right, next up we have Arkwright the Card Game. Now, uh, I actually learned about this one because the publisher, Game Brewer, reached out to me about potentially making a sponsored tutorial playthrough for this game. Uh, that is potentially going to happen later on in the year. I don't actually have uh, some timing on that, but this appears to be a card game version of Arkwright. Now, I haven't actually played Arkwright. I know it is a heavy Euro game about the Industrial Revolution where you're trying to um, use your workforce to generate stuff, and then you start to get automated uh, workforce 
those uh, robot type things in to replace the uh, actual humans. And there's a bunch of other stuff going on. I think there's stocks. <laughs> Again, I've never played it, but this appears to be a card game version of it. So I can't exactly uh, tell you how they are different at this point, but it says there's loans, markets, stock holding, uh, uh, industry and manufacturing and a whole bunch of other stuff going on in here. So I will potentially be doing a playthrough video for this, in which case I will learn a lot more about it. Obviously the designer is Stefan Risthaus who did design Arkwright. So it's likely to have a lot of uh, similarities to the uh, big board game version. All right, next up we have Astrum. Now this is coming out from Cosmodrome Games, uh, the same publisher as Aquatica. And uh, this one looks to be all about creating constellations on your board. It says it's a medieval abstract strategy puzzle game with drafting and tile placement. Uh, now thematically, I guess there's a king who's a wise astrologer and he wants everybody to like make charts for the future and whatnot. And uh, in this game, you are trying to make these constellations and it seems like the things that you do will kind of impact the options for your next opponents around the table. Um, you are also uh, trying to score in specific rounds, and there are no images of what this game actually looks like at this point. Uh, it says it's a 30 to 45 minute game, so not particularly long overall. Uh, it does have a picture of the cover. It looks nice. All Cosmodrome games, in my experience, look great, so that does not surprise me too much overall, and I would definitely like to learn more about this, see what the board looks like, see what these constellations look like that you are trying to build out in front of you, and yeah, yeah just looking forward to seeing some more information on BGG. All right, next up we have Bivouac. Now this is a 2020 game. I think it's going to be going up on Kickstarter. I'm not sure exactly when, uh, but the main reason I'm interested in this game is because of the theme. Uh, I am an Eagle Scout from the Boy Scouts in America, so I have camped a lot in my life. I love camping and uh, summer camps and whatnot, and the theming of this game is essentially a camp-themed board game where you're trying to create a camp retreat center. Um, there is worker placement in this game, and it seems like you're trying to go throughout an entire season, so you are generating some materials, you are building out your camp, and certain things are better at certain times of year versus other times in the year, I believe, based off of the description. So that all sounds interesting. Um, again, I'm mostly interested in this one because of the theme, so I would love to see some images of what the game looks like. Right now, they just have the um, kind of box image cover, and it looks like it kind of has a simplistic uh, vector-based graphic thing going on, which I do like in video games as well as board games. So yeah, I am curious about this one. Uh, the designer is Chris Van Bogelen, and on BGG, this is their only game of note, um, or I guess only game that they are listed as the designer for. So yeah, looking forward to learning more about Bivouac. Uh, and after that, we have the Verlesen Biblio tech or something like that. Sorry, I'm not great at non-English languages. Um, the main reason I'm paying attention to this game is because of the designer. Uh, Leo Colavini uh, is designing this one. It appears to be another escape room type game, kind of like Unlock. It says that, um, oh, <laughs> it means the Lost Library. Um, this is an escape game that consists only of cards. The door to the library is locked shut and you're stuck inside and there are combination locks and you have to complete the puzzles to obtain um, the codes for these locks. Um, there are a couple images on BGG and it looks like some of the components are actual doors that kind of open up with uh, various puzzles and stuff like that on the inside. Um, it doesn't look like all of these are standard cards. Like maybe that's just the artwork on some of these cards. But either way, it looks like it's a puzzly game, just another entry into the um, uh, unlock style escape room in a box sort of game. And I think Leo Colavini makes some pretty cool games. Um, he has a lot of uh, entries on Board Game Geek. But some of the ones in particular are uh, Think Straight as well as, um, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Castello Methoni, which I played recently and really liked. Uh, he's done a lot of other stuff, obviously. So uh, either way, I'm quite curious to learn more about this one. Um, we have a bunch of exit games here in the house, which we haven't actually played yet. So if I did get this, it might just sit on the shelf as we wait to get around to playing it. But either way, I, I do like escape room in a box type games. So I'd like to learn more about this. All right, next up we have the Wickinger Saga. Now, uh, this one, uh, oh yes, the reason I'm interested in this one is because I actually watched the overview video that Board Game Geek did from a recent convention. Um, this looks to be a game that has some deck building, um, it has some simultaneous action selection, and uh, they have quite a few images on Board Game Geek. Unfortunately, none of them really show the main mechanism. <laughs> now, the way this works is on the board in the middle of the table, there is a track going from zero to 35. Now, on each round, you're going to draw a big card, and on it, 
it is kind of a subset of those numbers, like 24 to 31, and you line that up with the big track on the board. And then on your turn, you essentially play cards from your hand that have different values on them to move your pawn down the track. I think you start at zero, or maybe you don't always start at zero. But what you're trying to do is land your token on a spot on the, the card that's kind of floating there, which gives you the benefits that you want. Now, some of these are actually bad, so if you overshoot, you might actually lose points or lose money, uh, and sometimes you have to kind of like uh, thread the needle on different uh, options in the middle. Now, at the end of the round, you actually do some deck building to add new cards into your deck, and those cards have new numbers on them, as well as uh, special effects that can activate. So this is the kind of game where you don't necessarily always want a big number. You might want a one, for instance, to get a bunch of extra points because you just need to go over one more time. It sounds pretty interesting. Honestly, I watched the overview video on BGG and I wanted to play it. <laughs> it seems like a cool idea on deck building, relatively simple overall as you try to piece together the options on your hand to add up to the spot that you want to go to. I'm not sure what kind of powers these cards have on them, but a lot of them seem to have text. So yeah, I am quite curious. Uh, I think um, every single round you essentially go through uh, a random card and some random events that have other things happen overall. So uh, either way, there seems to be a lot of cool stuff going on here. I'm not sure if it's going to come out in English anytime soon. It's a Schmidt Spiel game, and there is uh, quite a bit of uh, German on the cards. So even if this one is available on like Amazon.de or something like that, um, I would not be able to play it without some serious um, uh, paste ups or whatnot. So I hope this one gets an English version because I would definitely be interested in trying it. All right, next up we have Gates of Mara. Now this is a WizKids release for 2020. Uh, the designer is JB Howell, who sounds familiar. Uh, looks like, oh wow, he has a lot of uh, games uh, released as well as in contract. It looks like uh, Flotilla and Papillon and some other ones. Uh, Flotilla was a wacky game that came out uh, just uh, earlier this year or last year uh, of like a couple different phases and some Concordia stuff going on. It was like an hour to teach the game. There was a lot of cool stuff in that game, but it didn't end up being my favorite. Uh, but either way, in this game, <laughs> this is a fantasy area majority uh, worker placement style game. It says it's 90 to 180 minutes, so definitely not light overall. And it looks like you are leading a tribe and uh, this is a fantasy world with pure elemental energy. Um, and in this game, you have upgradable worker placement and a layered area control mechanic. Um, I guess there's also just thematically like reptiles and uh, insects and elves and whatnot. So you're trying to, uh, it says, strategically position your tribe members around the realms and gates. You enchant your tribe members to give them abilities and you compete for short-term objectives while also, I guess, looking on your influence. It seems like there's some cool stuff going on here. Um, there are no images at all, no box cover or anything, so I would definitely like to learn more. Um, this seems like it's kind of my wheelhouse. I like um, midway euro -y style games. Uh, upgradable worker placement sounds cool. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to see what's going on in this game. All right, we can now move on to Glasgow. Now, this is a game being published by Lookout Games, and it's a two-player only game. And generally, I'm not uh, too uh, focused on those. I don't play two-player games all that often uh, with my game group, but this has some pretty cool ideas. Now, I actually looked through, and the designer is Mandala Fernandez Grandin, and this is their only design credit, and it seems like they actually are from Glasgow. So <laughs> they are uh, designing a game named after the city that they live. And in this game, you are uh, doing a time track type thing. So you are going to deal out all of these cards in a big circle. Um, you and your opponent have a token and whoever is farthest behind can take their turn to go, I think, as far ahead as they want to, to activate a spot. And what you're doing is you're constructing a four by four grid in the middle of the table that's kind of shared of a variety of buildings and cards that will give you bonuses and benefits based off of other cards that are placed down. And I imagine these are affected by the actions around the outside of the board as well. Now you're gonna keep playing the game until you finish the uh, four by four grid in the middle and uh, whoever has the most points wins, I assume. But either way, this seems like a pretty cool game. I love time tracks in games in general, so I would like to learn more. I'd especially like to see a video of how this works. It's got a decent amount of detail on the Board Game Geek page already, including a couple of photos with what the game looks like. So uh, for a first time designer, I am certainly intrigued to see more about uh, what this game is like to play because the description, while being good, is still relatively high level with the stuff that you are doing. 
All right, the next game is Golem. Now this is being published by Cranio Creations and this is being designed by three Italian designers. Um, <laughs> they are once again, the same people who are behind Coimbra, Lorenzo El Magnifico, Terramara, Igizia and whatnot. So um, these people obviously work together quite a lot. Now this is a 90 to 120 minute Euro style game where you have action drafting, you are rolling dice, uh, there is variable player powers and set collection, a whole bunch of stuff going on. And it seems like it is thematic Thematically, all about um, the 16th century legend in Prague about clay golems being uh, given life, essentially, and uh, wandering around doing stuff, potentially becoming too powerful and destroying things. But the, the biggest thing, why I'm curious in this, besides the designer pedigree, obviously they've made some cool games, is this down here. It says the game is divided into five rounds, and at the beginning of each round, players place 15 colored marbles into a 3D synagogue that will split them into five lines corresponding to the five main actions available in the game. Now that sounds interesting. <laughs> I'm hoping that this is simultaneous so that as you are trying to place these 15 colored marbles out, you are uh, doing it at the same time as other people because that could probably take a while. And it seems like the color of the marbles is impacted by some, some of the uh, things that you get to do later on in the round and the location of the marble within that given uh, grid is gonna dictate the power and the different actions that you can do as well. Um, so it seems like a pretty cool idea. And unfortunately they do not have any images of what this looks like. They just have the box cover, which Looks pretty cool. It's got a big clay-faced golem thing on the front. So yeah, I would definitely like to learn more about this. It's got a neat theme overall for a uh, solid midweight Euro style game. It seems uh, I like seeing uh, different themes in Euro games. Uh, so many of them are just based in cities or whatever, but uh, this one is about animating clay golems, which is neat. So yeah, I'm looking forward to learning more about this. All right, next up we have Halertu, which is a Uwe Rosenberg design game. Now, this is one of four players, 90 to 180 minutes, which means this is probably a medium to maybe heavyweight game as well. And it's been a while since Uwe Rosenberg has come out with a heavy game. He's done a lot of lighter games recently, and there is not a lot of information on BGG about this game right now. It says this is a farming style game with worker placement. And specifically, it says that this combines classic worker placement mechanisms with the thematic implementation of a traditional two field crop rotation and thus offers the players an interesting historical background. Now it says that apparently uh, this uh, Halertu is located in Pavaria, which is the largest contiguous hop growing area in the world. So you are making hops for beer, it seems like thematically. Now, as far as what you're doing in this game, that's not actually that interesting. I mean, hops and beer are nice. I like beer, but uh, calling it a classic worker placement game um, and then not really saying anything else makes me feel like maybe there's not a lot of new stuff going on here, but there's also so little on BGG about this that I really can't make uh, those assumptions. Um, down below, there are a couple of uh, forum posts already, and in one of them, somebody found a breakdown of the contents in the box, and it looks like it has like 300 cards and 18 punch boards. So maybe there's a lot going on in this game and they just haven't fleshed out the description overall. Uh, 300 cards is a lot. 18 punch boards is also a lot. So maybe this is gonna be like a Feast for Odin style game of just components like crazy and a whole bunch of stuff to do. Uh, but right now at the moment, we don't actually know much, but either way, I am quite curious to learn more about it. All right, next up we have Hatairo. Now, the reason I know about this game, well, I mean, I bumped into it on Board Game Geek, but also uh, the publisher for this one reached out to me to make a sponsored tutorial style playthrough. Now I've actually filmed that and edited it up already. It's not gonna go live for a few weeks. It's gonna go live in the middle of um, uh, March. And this is a game all about trying to get pigments together to create flags of the world. And you put them down into a grid in front of you where you will um, get extra pigment based off of the location and also the location is going to dictate a bunch of bonus points based off of the like uh, stuff on the flags. Like does this flag have lots of diagonals on it or does it have animals on it? Does it have letters or you know uh, the number of different colors on the flag will dictate the amount of points it has. So that's all kind of interesting. I mean, again, take this with a grain of salt. I was paid to make a video for this game. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. But um, also if this sounds interesting to you, then uh, keep your eye out on this channel because in a couple of weeks, I will be putting out a full playthrough of it. So you'll get to learn everything about it that you'd like to know. 
All right, next up we have Korra, Rise of an Empire. Now, this is being published by Yellow Games in 2020, and there's not a lot of information on BGG right now. It says, in this game, you are the ruler of a resplendent city in ancient Greece. Uh, it's up to you to develop it faster and better than your opponents, and there's really not a lot of details about how this game plays. It says that there is dice rolling, and down below there is an English video on BGG that I watched. Unfortunately, it's only about four minutes long, and they didn't talk about the mechanics at all. <laughs> they just kind of gave a high-level overview of the game, saying it's essentially a race game, and that they tried to make it relatively streamlined so that it's a quick game to teach and to get out onto the table. Now, they do have an image of what the game uh, looks like when you are playing it. It seems like everybody has a private player board with some uh, inset tracks with like a double-layer player board. Um, apparently, you're racing to do a bunch of stuff. There are four big tracks in the middle of the board and a whole bunch of icons going around. Uh, there is dice also in this game. I'm not sure if you are drafting them or just rolling them, but I'm curious. Uh, the, the art looks nice, and Yellow Games makes some pretty cool stuff. They don't actually have a designer listed at this point, but uh, either way, I'm quite curious to learn more about this one, specifically to learn about how the dice rolling mechanics work and how the racing mechanics work in the game. All right, next up we have Machination. Now, this one is uh, not very fleshed out on BGG. It says this is an abstract strategy puzzle game with card drafting, pattern building, and set collection. Now, the reason I'm mostly paying attention to this is because it is designed by Matthew Dunstan and Phil Walker-Harding. Now, that's a pretty good design duo. Uh, they have made a lot of very cool games. I'm not going to start uh, listing them out here right now, but um, yeah, a lot of uh, fascinating ideas and good uh, design decisions have come into the games these designers have made in the past. Now, this is coming out from Cranio Creations, and it says that in this game, uh, this is a, a vehicle dismantling depot, and you have to choose the right cars to pile up in your warehouse. You try to be the fastest player to fulfill common objectives to receive best, the best bonuses, and you don't want to forget to respect your stock requirement. This is a 30-minute game, two to four players. I'd like to learn a lot more about this game. There's no images. There's just that two-sentence description. So I am interested enough from the designer pedigree of this game. Uh, and also, the publisher Cranio Creations puts out some great stuff, certainly some good-looking games. So I am hopeful that this could be an interesting game, and I am uh, hoping that that uh, becomes the case as they add more stuff out here onto BGG. All right, we now have Maharaja. Now, this is also being published by Cranio Creations, and I am probably going to be doing a sponsored tutorial playthrough for this game. Uh, it's having a Kickstarter go out in April, in the early stages of April, unless the timing changes. And this is actually a re-implementation of Maharaja, which came out many years ago, uh, 2004, <laughs> so uh, 16 years ago. Now, I have not played the original Maharaja. Um, I believe this one and the uh, old one were both Michael Keyes and Wolfgang Kramer. It looks like that is the case, yep. And uh, there is a video on BGG for the new version, and it seems like they have changed the theming a little bit around here, but it is still an area majority style game, and uh, what you're doing in this game is actually simultaneously selecting what your action is on each round, uh, hiding it from your opponents, and then when it's your turn, you reveal with a little dial with some uh, uh, specified uh, little arrows for what, what the action that you did, and then you do that action. Now, it seems like this new version has more replayability, I think. Um, they also added some other mechanics, so I think it's going to be heavier than the original version. But again, I never actually played the original version, so I can't really speak to that. Uh, but if I end up doing a sponsored playthrough for this game, I will likely learn a lot more about this one in the next few weeks. And uh, I think that Kramer and Kiesling have made some really cool games out there in the past, so I am quite curious to learn more about this one and have a chance to actually play this one on camera. All right, next up we have Man Maus Auch Gonnen Konnen. <laughs> now, uh, translated, this one means you have to also grant others something. Now, uh, I'm probably just going to call this one Gonnen Konnen in the future because, uh, well, I've actually bought the game already. Uh, now, there is an overview video on BGG, and I watched it, and I became very intrigued. So this is a roll-and-write style game where you have these square cards, and uh, when it's your turn, you roll all the dice, and then you get up to two re-rolls. Now, you're trying to get a set of specific requirements on the dice that you rolled to fulfill the requirements on the cards in front of you. And uh, if you don't, then you can re-roll the dice, and every time you re-roll, every one of your opponents can take one of the die rolls that you just re-rolled and mark that off on one of their cards, which will make that card easier to complete when it is their turn. Now again, you have to completely, uh, fully complete a card on your turn, so the more individual requirements you tick off on other players' turns, the easier it will be to complete them when it is your turn. 
Now, uh, you're trying to complete a 3x3 three three grid, and some of these cards that you complete will give you um, uh, special bonuses and actions to manipulate your dice a couple times in the game, and other ones just give you ways to score victory points. And that all sounded super interesting to me. So I looked it up on Amazon.de, and there was a copy for like, $15 shipped from Germany all the way here to California. Um, and then after I did that, a couple of reviews came up on BGG, um, and they're not super positive. <laughs> there are people kind of complaining about how random it is and how there are some disadvantages to going first, but I guess I'm going to learn about it because I had already put the order in uh, once I read and uh, watched these reviews that were not quite so glowing. I love the idea of it. Maybe this is the kind of game that could be slightly tweaked to uh, affect the uh, uh, first player disadvantage. But either way, I will be trying Conan Conan. Um, it sounds intriguing. Maybe I will be disappointed too, like some other people. But either way, uh, I will learn a lot more about that one soon because it is currently in the mail heading over towards my house. All right, next up we have Merchants of the Dark Road. Now, uh, this is published by Elf Creek Games, and I am planning on doing a sponsored tutorial for this game. Uh, it popped up on BGG recently. I've actually known about this game for many months, you know, like four or five months or so. Uh, now, I got to... Actually, no, I've known about it for longer than that. I played a prototype version of this one at Origins last year in June. So, yeah, this has been on my radar for quite some time. Uh, either way, I am finally going to be doing a tutorial for this one, and it is a medium to heavyweight Euro game where you have your merchants kind of traveling around a road uh, on a rondelle in the middle of the table, and you are doing a variety of actions based off of where you land. You are trying to, um, you're doing some stuff with dice. There's a, a dice worker placement going on with the rondelle, and I did play it like seven months ago, and I'm sure things have changed, and unfortunately there aren't any uh, photos on BGG at this moment, but um, I can say that I thought it was pretty intriguing, and I'm interested in doing the sponsored playthrough for it. Of course, again, take that with a grain of salt. I am being paid to make a video for this. Now, the designer for this one is Brian Suher, and he has done a few things recently, uh, in particular uh, Paradox and Winterborn. Uh, Coldwater Crown is also one that I've heard of. I haven't actually played any of these games by him before, so this is my first for him, but um, again, I've heard about his games. I've heard a lot of good things about Winterborn in particular. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing um, the essentially final version of this game that I'll be filming a uh, video for. All right, let's now move on to Mysterium Park. Now, this one is being published by Lillibud, and this is uh, designed by the same people who made the original Mysterium. Now, there's not a lot of details on BGG at all. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a little bit of fluff here about how um, this is Mysterium Park, and the former director has disappeared, and you are investigating. Um, it says this is releasing at the end of 2020, and uh, from what little I've been able to glean uh, based off of like a forum thread and some videos, it seems like like this one is going to have hidden roles. Uh, I think actually down here, it might say that over here as well. So it seems like it's probably going to be a Mysterium-esque game with hidden roles. I'm not sure if that's going to be traitors or whatnot, but I really liked Mysterium, so I am curious to learn more about this. Honestly, I don't generally like hidden roles in games, so there's a distinct possibility that the more I learn about this game, the less interested I am in playing it. But there's so little on the internet about this game right now, so I would still like to learn more before I actually uh, make that decision. All right, next up we have Novgorod. Now, this one is designed by Stefan Risthaus, who, again, was the designer of uh, Arkwright. And it says down here, <laughs> this sounds like such a Euro game. It says, players build contours in Hanseatic cities to ship goods and manufacture luxury products. These are necessary to fulfill missions that give you victory points and allow you to step forward on your career card. So have you heard something that Euro-y any time recently? Uh, in particular, you've got an image on the front cover with a uh, kind of happy guy in a robe in front of a boat. I mean, man, this looks like a Euro game, but I like Euro games. <laughs> and now it says that it's a 40 to 50 minute game. So it's probably not that heavy overall. There aren't any images of what the game looks like to play. And obviously there's very little detail about the mechanics. It says this is a hand management game with investment and uh, it's a card game set in the medieval times. That's it. So um, I definitely want to learn more about this one. I have been finding myself gravitating towards some simpler Euro games recently. There's a lot of very complicated, very cool, very thinky games coming out right now. And I'm kind of rebounding away from that and looking for more games that have like three to six page rule books instead of 12 to 20 page rule books. And maybe this is going to be one of them. I don't know. Uh, either way, I definitely want to learn more about this one. 
All right, uh, next up we have Paris. Now, this one is a Kramer and Kiesling game. It's being published by Game Brewer. And unfortunately, I am not going to be doing a sponsored playthrough for this one because my schedule was too full. Uh, they reached out to me to ask me to try and do it. And I am super booked out right now, like all the way to June. So I was not able to fit this one in, even though I am quite intrigued by it. It's a 45 to 100 minute game. It's a city building economic game with an action queue, deck building, hand management, uh, uh, set collection, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, they have a bunch of photos of what the game looks like, and it looks really Euro-y. Uh, you have little uh, uh, player screens that look like little houses. You've got a big circular board in the middle of the table with a bunch of face-down tokens and a bunch of face-up cards on it. Uh, it there's just looks like a whole bunch of euro -y stuff going on here, and I like things that uh, Kramer and Kiesling have done in the past. So I'm looking forward to seeing the Kickstarter campaign for this game uh, to learn more about it, because again, Unfortunately, I had to say no to actually covering this one on the channel. So, uh, yeah, I will definitely learn more about this one soon. All right, next up we have Quetzal. Uh, now, this is designed by on Alexander Garcia, and I think he's done a couple things. Uh, oh, just Deluvia Project. Now, that was a uh, cool game that came out uh, back in 2016, I think, 2015. And uh, that was a pretty heavy worker placement style Euro game. Now, this game does not have a time listed on it, uh, so I'm not sure how heavy it is, but it says down here that Quetzal, the city of sacred birds, has just been discovered. You have five days to explore the site and collect the most beautiful objects that are buried there. You, uh, will you be able to manage your team uh, and trusted to you on a daily basis to optimize your excavations? So it seems like um, each turn you are rolling meeples, uh, which I'm assuming means this is dice worker placement. It doesn't have any mechanisms listed. And then you send your groups out to different uh, spots in the city to collect artifacts effects, and um, your opponents are obviously trying to do this as well. So it seems like, actually, you know, after reading this again, that this is a pretty typical go raid an ancient city kind of theme game, which I'm not actually super jazzed about. So uh, either way, we'll learn more about this one in the future. Right now, they don't have any images of the game or any uh, videos about it online, but I'm, I'm curious to learn more about it. But I guess that theme, uh, you know, it's the same kind of thing like raiding Egyptian tombs and whatnot. Uh, it's not great, but, but either way, either way, uh, let's now move on to Renature. Now, this is another Kramer and Kiesling game. They come out with a lot of games, uh, and this is being published by Deep Print Games. Now, this is a brand new publisher. In fact, I just watched a uh, video, a little interview with uh, one of the people with Deep Print Games talking about the creation of it, and um, the people behind this uh, uh, publishing company are from Frosted Games, Pegasus Spiel, and Egger Spiel, I think, and maybe some other things. So they are creating a new game, uh, a new uh, publisher, that is, all about, um, they said the Deep is for uh, Deep uh, uh, development in their games. So they're really focusing on uh, heavily developed games. Uh, now, this is going to be the first game that's coming out from this new publisher, and <laughs> the description is is definitely light. It says, Renature is an area control game with dominoes. And that's it. That's, that's really the only information we have out here besides the designers and the publisher. So I'm looking forward to seeing some images uh, and some more mechanics listed out. Uh, I don't mind dominoes, and I have never played an area majority dominoes game before, so I'm curious. Uh, and also, Kramer and Kiesling are just very established Euro game designers. They make a lot of good stuff. So I am confident this one is going to be good. I would just uh, certainly like to learn more about it. All right, we can now move on to Skyrise. Now, this one is being published by Roxley, and this re-implements Metropolis. Uh, now, they've actually reached out to me about potentially doing a uh, sponsored playthrough for Skyrise. Uh, I'm not sure the actual timing uh, for it. It sounds like there might be a Kickstarter for it. So uh, that may or may not happen in the future. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but it seems like this is a standalone sequel to the 2008 Metropolis game. Uh, it's based on a similar spatial bidding mechanism, but it also says there are uh, many things that are new over Overall to this game. Now, I never actually played the original Metropolis. Uh, it's got a really funky looking board. I've definitely uh, seen images of it before. Um, I know that you are bidding to actually be able to place these tokens down onto um, the different spots on the board. This is uh, definitely a Euro looking city instead of like an American one. This is not a grid. It's all kind of got funky shapes and whatnot. But uh, either way, Skyrise is supposedly a uh, standalone sequel to it. So I am looking forward to learning more. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to cover this game on the channel. Uh, uh, hopefully, the timing is going to work out right now. That's a little bit up in the air, but it could happen. Uh, and I enjoy um, that kind of game where you're trying to put things out and compete for areas on a grid. Um, I'm not usually crazy about bidding, but it sounds like this one might have kind of a raw type bidding where you have unique numbers. And the amount of bids is actually dictated, I think, 
sync by the number of free spots around the locations. So there seems like there's some cool stuff going on here. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, learning more. I guess I could have watched a video to learn more about Metropolis, but I didn't actually do that much research, I guess, before I started recording this. But either way, I'm looking forward to learning more about Skyrise. All right, let's now move on to Small Railroad Empires. Now, uh, this one I don't know much about. Uh, I certainly haven't heard of the publisher Arcana Games before, or Ar Archona. Uh, now, it says down here that this is a pick up and deliver track laying game uh, where you are essentially uh, placing two trains out onto a modular board each turn. You have to pay gold costs for different terrain, and they do have some images of it. Uh, it looks like it's a hex grid with a variety of different types of terrain, and based off of the photo of this prototype, um, it appears that multiple trains can go on the same spot. Now, I don't know if it's going to cost extra to go where other people have been, but I am finding myself enjoying these kind of logistics games more as the years go on. Uh, so I'm curious to try this one out or at least learn more about it. Uh, uh, they just have photos of the prototype up here right now on BGG. And interestingly enough, um, it says it's a 30 to 60 minute game. And I looked into the designer of this one, which is Milan um, Tasvecki. And the only other design credit that he has on BGG is Small Star Empires. So it seems like this is kind of a, uh, a shtick for him, <laughs> uh, trying to have uh, small versions of uh, big sprawling games. I think that Small Star Empires was kind of like a uh, miniaturized quick version of a 4X space style game. So uh, yeah, there seems to be some pretty neat uh, ideas going on here. Uh, there's even variable player powers, it appears, and uh, set collection. So I'm looking forward to learning more about this game. All right, next up we have Sonora. Now, this one is being published by Pandasaurus Games, and this is a very funky game. Now, they have an overview video up on BGG, but I'll tell you right now, uh, the, the the idea of this game is that it is a dexterity flicking roll and write style game. So the way it works is in the middle of the table, you have this kind of mini crokinole board type of uh, uh, structure. I say crokinole because it's got a hole in the middle that uh, is good to land your piece into there. And you're going to be flicking around your discs that have a variety of different numbers on them. And this board is split up into four quadrants. Now, after everyone has flicked their discs and knocked each other's discs around, you will then uh, use the discs to do four different, totally different mini games on your uh, piece of paper that you have in front of you. Now, the value of the disc and the location of the disc within that flicking grid or that flicking um, uh, area is going to dictate the uh, the things that you can do on these mini games. Uh, one of them involves just checking off a bunch of little hexes in order to finish that uh, grouping uh, earlier. Another one has the value of the disc uh, apply to a tetramino type uh, shape like Tetris and you like place that down into a grid to get bonuses. Another one has a branching tree path where you like if you use a three then you cross off two things and circle the third spot and you get points for that spot that you landed and the final one is like a big network for a city and you're trying to cross off different lines and get points for that. So it seems like there's a lot going on for a simple flicking style game. It's definitely an interesting idea to combine dexterity with roll and write. Uh, so yeah, I am curious to try this one. I don't think it's necessarily the kind of thing that I would rush out to try and acquire for myself, but uh, this is certainly a game that I would try at a convention just to uh, say that I did. Um, it might be great. I'm not really sure. It seems like a very strange juxtaposition of those two mechanics. Uh, so I can't really say until I potentially have a chance to try it. All right, next up we have Steampunk Rally Fusion. Now, this one is being published by Roxley Games, and this is a standalone uh, sequel, essentially, to Steampunk Rally. Now, this is a game that I covered years ago on the channel, uh, way back when, like four or five years ago, Roxley did used to send me uh, uh, review copies of games back when I used to review games. And I actually did a full playthrough of this game. This was long before I ever took any money for any of my content. Uh, I liked Steampunk Rally. It's a drafting style game where you're building this crazy uh, um, engine, like race car engine thing in front of you. You then use dice to power up that engine to get some really cool combos going on. And then you hit hazards and your, your racing car kind of falls apart. It seems like this this is doing the same kind of stuff, although it says it's science fiction related. So I think thematically this one may be kind of in the future where the original steampunk rally was kind of like old timey stuff. It was like uh, Tesla versus Marie Curie versus Einstein and whatnot. Uh, so I'm curious about this game. I mean, I, I enjoyed steampunk rally uh, for the many plays of it that I had. I actually got rid of a copy of it and uh, Roxley has said they're going to send me a copy of this game uh, for my impressions vlog. So I'm not sure, probably not going to do a sponsored playthrough of this one, but I will have a chance to play it at some point in the future. 
All right, next up we have Succulent. Now this one is being published by Renegade Games and the designer is J. Alex Kevern. Now he has designed a lot of games, some of which I like quite a bit and other ones I'm not super hot on, but some of my favorite games from J. Alex Kevern are uh, Passing Through Petra, I also really like Gold West. Now in this game, it looks like you are trying to cultivate a succulent plant garden and they have a bunch of images on BGG, which I love to see. And it seems like this is actually a game where players are doing tiling on a central area. Now the tiles that you're putting down appear to have holes in them. Uh, so I'm not really sure how this is all gonna work. Like do you place the tile and then maybe fill the holes in later on? I'm not sure how the communal nature of this works, but I do know that uh, players have a little player board in front of themselves, let's see, um, where they essentially have a variety of different succulent type of plants and you're, I guess, putting little water droplets down on them to try and score points. There's not actually a lot of detail about the mechanics of this game on BGG. It's definitely about the theming as you are trying to uh, collect succulent cuttings from your garden and then you wanna get water crystals to use them to complete your projects and whatnot. So it definitely seems like it's a euro -y style game. It says abstract strategy, but I like tile laying games. I like succulent plants when it comes to just like not talking about board games at all. And I think that J. Alex Kevern comes up with some pretty cool design ideas. So I am looking forward to seeing the actual mechanics of this game because I think I am pretty well set up to enjoy it. All right, next up we have Tekhenu Obelisk of the Sun. Now this one is being published by Board and Dice and the designers of it are Danielle Tashini and David Turchi. Now I believe the two of them were also uh, had a hand in uh, Teotihuacan. Is that true? Yes, it appears that it is. Uh, so Teotihuacan was a uh, heavy uh, rondel game with dice and whatnot. I think David Churchy just did the uh, solo version of Teotihuacan, but um, this appears to be another heavy uh, Euro game, this time with uh, David Churchy being one of the, uh, the main duo of designers doing the actual full game. Now, uh, this is being published by Board and Dice, which means I am going to be doing a sponsored playthrough for it. I have a great relationship with that publisher. Um, they have told me that they want me to make a sponsored tutorial video for essentially every game that they make, which is uh, great for me from a business perspective. And I guess it's great for you all if you enjoy the types of games that they make. Uh, they definitely make a lot of medium to heavyweight euros. Uh, so again, take this with a grain of salt. I um, uh, frequently work with this publisher and I am planning on doing a uh, video for this game. But uh, talking about the specifics of the game, there's a lot of information on BGG at this moment. I'm not gonna parse all of it, but it seems like the core idea of this game is you have action dice drafting with a board that has an obelisk in the middle of it. Now, uh, the idea here is that the uh, sun is going to cast a shadow around the obelisk as it goes through the sky. And the location where you draft dice is going to, um, well, the uh, things that you can do with the dice is gonna vary based off of how in the sun they are. Uh, I guess if they are fully in shadow, then they're like, corrupted bad dice, which means probably bad things for you, or maybe bad things for your opponent. I'm not actually sure about that overall, but I do know you are drafting dice from the middle of the table to put them onto your own player board, your player board looks to have some tracks and some various euro -y type things that are going on. And I know that the sun is essentially gonna move throughout the game. So the areas that are in shadow in the middle of the board are gonna change. So all of that stuff sounds pretty cool. I like games from both of the designers of this game. Uh, I like a lot of games from Board and Dice and uh, it definitely seems like a medium to heavyweight Euro game, uh, which I have oftentimes enjoyed in the past. So yeah, uh, looking forward to having a chance to cover this one. Uh, I'm not sure offhand when this one is supposedly coming out, uh, definitely 2020, but I think uh, later on in the year, in the second half of the year or so. All right, next up we have Castles of Tuscany. Now this one says it re-implements the Castles of Burgundy, and that's essentially the only information about it on the internet, besides the fact that it is designed by Stefan Feld, who did design Castles of Burgundy. Um, now they have an overview video on BGG, but unfortunately all they say is, well, the name sure sounds a whole lot like Castles of Burgundy, wink, wink, Make that of that what you will, wink, and that's it. <laughs> so um, I kind of figure considering it's listed as re-implementing Castles of Burgundy, it will probably have um, dice uh, worker allocation. It will probably have uh, a board, maybe even hex grid, where you are placing down your uh, d different uh, types of tiles to activate different things like Castles of Burgundy. I quite liked Castles of Burgundy, so I'm curious to see what kind of tweaks and differences the Castles of Tuscany bring. Uh, certainly, I think a lot of people, uh, currently 768 people subscribing to this one on BGG, want to know a lot more about it than just, well, wow, the name sounds a lot like Castles of Burgundy. So hopefully more information will come out for this one soon. 
All right, next up we have The Coldest Night. Now, this one is being published by Indie Boards and Cards, and it doesn't necessarily scream out to me as being in my wheelhouse, but I don't know, something about it made me curious to learn more. Now, it says it's a 20-minute cooperative game where you are trying to feed fuel onto a fire to keep it lit. Now, that essentially seems to be the entire thing that you're doing in this game. You have uh, cards that will give you a certain amount of heat. Uh, it also requires the fire to be at certain levels. The fire is constantly dying out, and players have to work together against the encroaching cold to sequence their cards so that everything in the deck is burned. So it seems like maybe this is kind of a uh, puzzly game where you only win if every single card goes away. They do have a couple images of the game, and it looks like there's like uh, rotten floorboards, there's a chest, there are photographs that all can get thrown into the fire. There's some tokens and whatnot, and these cards do have numbers on them, and, and uh, yeah. So it seems like it's probably a cooperative group puzzle trying to get through these hands of cards as well as you can. It doesn't explicitly say it, but in general, this kind of game usually has uh, some restrictions on the kind of communication that players can have. Uh, I imagine if you could just say everything, then it would be easy to get through the deck, but I could be wrong. Uh, there's not a lot of information about that on BGG yet. It only plays in 20 minutes, and I don't know, just something about it intrigues me. You know, I kind of expected there to be like zombies coming in the dark or anything like that, and uh, nope, it seems like the enemy in this game is just the cold. <laughs> You're all trying to keep the fire going, and I don't know, for some reason, it has me intrigued. So uh, I definitely want to learn more about this. All right, we have three games left to talk about, and this one is The Lost Code. Now, the designer for this one is Leo Colavini, uh, who has made some cool games in the past. I've already talked about him earlier on in this vlog. And in particular, the moment I uh, realized I had to subscribe to this one is when it says that it re-implements Think Straight. Now, Think Straight is a game that came out many years ago, uh, back in 2015. And this is a deduction style game where, uh, kind of like Hanabi, you have some cards in front of you that face out to everyone else. But it's a competitive game where you're trying to, I, send, I think, race to be the first person to figure out what all of your numbers are. Now, the way Think Straight worked, I believe, I have not played it, is that you essentially make um, educated guesses about the range of uh, values of the different cards in front of you, and then your opponents tell you how close you were, and then you write down your notes on your pad and try to figure out what your numbers are from there. And I always thought Think Straight sounded cool, and the reviews of this game uh, in general said, this game is really cool, and the components are awful. Like, apparently the cards are just like super flimsy paper and just just really not a good table presence, and then it was very hard to come up with a copy. There are no copies of it on BGG, so I've been curious to try this one for years because I like competitive deduction style games. So um, now here comes The Lost Code from the same designer. It re-implements this game, and it looks really cool. They have an image of a render of the game, uh, and it looks like it kind of has a... Uh, kind of Central American, uh, Mayan kind of artistic vibe going on. Um, I'm not sure how much has changed with this game. I'm not sure if it's a straight reprint with better art and components, or hopefully better art and components, or maybe they've tweaked the rules around a little bit, but it looks really cool. I like competitive deduction games. I like the idea to have a chance to play things straight, especially with potentially not awful components overall, so I am uh, pretty excited, honestly, to try this game. Uh, there's not a lot of information about it out there besides, of course, being a re-implementation of Think Straight, but for me, I think that's enough. All right, next up we have Village Green. Now, this one is being published by Osprey Games, and it is a 30-minute game designed by Pierre Sylvester. Now, I think they've designed one other thing. Oh, no, a few other things. Um, the Lost Expedition, North American Railways, Where Sinned Das Volk. Um, well, I've only played The Lost Expedition from all of these, and I quite liked it. Uh, that was a, um, a competitive or cooperative game about trying to find your way through a jungle. And uh, either way, <laughs> what's going on in Village Green is this is a competitive game where you are all trying to essentially vie for a village green of the year competition, essentially cultivating the plants and trees and whatnot on uh, your property. Now it says you are rival gardeners and you are trying to, uh, let's see here, uh, uh, range flowers, plant trees, commission statues, build ponds. You have to place all of these carefully and you have to split your days between acquiring and installing new features for your green and nominating it for one of the competition's awards. So 
that all sounds like fun. I, I like the theme overall. It seems kind of pleasant competing to have um, nice uh, backyards being rival gardeners overall. It seems like it might be tile laying. They, they haven't actually listed any mechanics, but I do like tile laying in general. Um, it, saying 30 minutes worries me a little bit just because I generally like this kind of game to be more like a 45 to 60 minute style game. But either way, I'm definitely curious to try this one out. And I will probably have the opportunity to considering Osprey Games seems to send me a copy of everything that they they make. Um, they have yet to actually sponsor a video, but they do send me free copies of games to try. So uh, it would not surprise me if one day I come home and this game is sitting on my doorstep. All right, let's now talk about the final game for today, the 34th game, and this one is Watch. Now, the designer of this game is Daniel Newman, who has designed a few other things recently, like Rolled West and uh, Dead Man's Cabal, and this game is being published by Spielpunks. Now, this game has a pretty cool theme, I think. It says, you've just started working at a Soviet watch factory, and you've discovered it used to be a World War II-era munitions factory. You have been sent here to make gears, which you can sell for money, but you also need those gears to disguise the munitions crates that you try to smuggle out. So you are digging through files in the foreman's office to uncover evidence of the governor, government's corruption. You are also monitoring your opponent's areas because they are trying to do all of these exact same things. So it says that it's a Euro game that blends the theme and mechanics really well. Um, and yeah, that seems kind of neat. Like, I'm working in a watch factory making gears. Definitely don't look at all this pile of munitions I'm trying to smuggle out while everyone else is trying to do the same thing. Um, they don't actually have any images of the uh, game board, like what it looks like, but they do have the box cover, which kind of has a noir, kind of old-timey vibe to it. Uh, definitely kind of a spies and thrillers thing of somebody looking through the uh, eye hole of a door with a big watch going on. Yeah, this game just looks neat overall. I definitely want to learn uh, quite a bit more about it. It seems like the kind of game I'd like to play. I am mostly a Euro game player, so theme is not in the forefront of my decision-making for games that I play, but I do love it when a theme is well integrated into the mechanics, and according to the publisher, that is the case with this game. Well, at this point, I am now done talking about all of these new games. Uh, 34 games seems like a lot until you realize that I sifted through about 1,200 entries that were added on to Board Game Geek over the last six weeks. Uh, now, not all of those are board games. A lot of them are like inserts or like tiny little expansions to CMON games and whatnot. But either way, there are a lot of new games that are added to Board Game Geek uh, realistically every single day. And uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to be putting out the next one of these games radar vlogs. Obviously, it's been about six weeks since the last one, so it might be about four to six weeks before I get around to the next one. Uh, and at that point, who knows, maybe I'll have even more than 34 games to talk about. Uh, this certainly went a little bit long overall, and I tried to be as choosy as I could to whittle this down to games I was really genuinely interested in, or at least quite intrigued by, and uh, I hope I did a good job of that. Either way, I think that's going to bring this vlog to a close. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.